Whoo! We what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie Bear all day. So let's get some work done. Uh, a good old scabber over at Choir Boys Outdoors sent me a few knives. I believe he got them from JR, and this happens to be one of the two architect knives that I have to go over. I have this one and then one that is a little bigger that I cannot wait to jump into. The difference between this one and that one is going to be just size and the fact that Scab did a full video on this one, but not yet that one. So that one is gonna have a fresh edge. This one is gonna have a used edge. So we'll be able to see how the two edges perform in different videos one from being new and one from being used. And if anybody knows Choir Boys Outdoors, he puts them through the ringer just the way we're supposed to. So let's get into it. Uh, the sheath itself, very nice. Kydex, this one does have a little label on it. It's, um, it's got a 23 degree edge, um, 800 grit uh, eight hundred grit edge. Um, really, really nice overall. What is this, Micarta? It looks like a Micarta grip and it's like a red color which is actually kind of nice and it kind of goes with this sheath that does have a leather backing plate with ferro rod holder or mag strip, whatever you're gonna put on there. And I do like that. It even has a little uh, corded strap on there. What can we say about this knife? I, I really, really, I mean, obviously this is the, uh, what's it called, the Red Wolf. I always mess it up by Work Tough Gear. And I think it's a great knife. I love this for a working knife of course i did my own camo um for a working knife i love this style i love the shape just like my se6 i love these beautiful drop points um i have to say this architect one definitely feels better in the hand and it is i don't know it is definitely more of a blade i mean it's it's it gives you more steel than the worked up and this thing's great so if this thing is you know as good as that but with just a little bit more size i could already tell you that i am going to love this now is it shave sharp after scabber put it through his tests um well that'll answer that question that will answer that question after scabs usage that is still razor sharp i'm not gonna lie to you i expected it to be sharp I didn't expect it to be that sharp after knowing what it went through. All right, there. That's some high quality H2O. That is really nice, man. So you do have a little bit of jimping here. It is a drop point. Feels like a flat grind. Um, it is really... <coughs> I choked on air. It is really nice. You do have this area back here that is also jimped. You can use it as a... Uh, as a banger car window breaker you can use it to um to bark shave <coughs> anything like that but it, it's it's all good in the hood I, I like it you do have a, a lanyard strap rather than a lanyard hole um i do like that let's um let's get it outside and see oh wait i, I almost forgot okay so it's architect knives this is the ak 5.5 because it should be 5.5 inches cp3v and the steel, and let's get make sure it's exactly that. So we are looking at a blade length of five and a half, maybe slightly bigger than that. Um, slight, maybe five and nine sixteenths. Um, and then you're looking at an, a uh, 10 and seven eighths overall in the length. So you're looking at five and a half and, and 11 overall pretty much. Um, the grip itself, top to bottom, just the grip is five inches without the pommel. So it is, it is appropriately sized as far as like a working man's bushcraft knife. Um, it's, it's how I would prefer it. I, I, I love like a nice five and a half, six to even seven inch blade, um, on a, on a working camp bushcraft knife. I think this is fantastic. Um, even like, who oh, sorry, like four and a half, uh, will get you there. It'll definitely get you there. Um, but one thing I can say is it's contoured. Well, it's comfortable, maybe slightly small for me, for me, for me, the grip is slightly small. The bigger one, I don't know. I don't know if the grip has changed with the size. It feels, it feels a little bit bigger. 
could be the same, but I don't know. Maybe it's because of the, the weight of the knife. I can't wait to get into this. I always save my favorites for last. And this one of all that were sent to me was my favorite. So um, let us uh, let us take this thing outside and use it. Ooh, golly, I can't see anything. Ooh, that's better. All right, so we just had some rain, and it looks like we're getting more. Not a lot of sunny days going on lately here in New England. All we're getting is heavy, heavy humidity. My glass is just fogged up, and uh, a lot of heat without a lot of sunshine. But let's check that out. Ooh, let's check that out. That's pretty nice, man. That's pretty nice. I, I, I really, really like it. It's obviously not weighted as a fighting knife you can feel that right away even though i can get it around easy it's because i know what i'm doing um but for the majority of people if you were going to try to turn it with a hand it's going to give you that awkward rear wrist flip because it's just not made for it it is absolutely 100 percent bush craft this is a a camp knife we are inside doing work on that guy right there on the 30 footer and she's inside painting it right now so I get some time to come out here and play with a knife. Let's do some, uh, let's do some four foot drops. We'll see how that bite is from gravity drop. Boop. Woo. That's not so bad. It's not so bad. There's a little rattle going on. I don't know if you can hear it, like a little ding. Feels to me like maybe these screws need to be tightened because it did make a little rattle. Let's do a couple hard downwards. Bam, yeah, you can hear the rattle. So, oh, that bites in really well though. Oh, you can hear that. I'm guaranteeing that there's no Loctite on these screws because you can literally hear that going doing, doing. And on a knife like this, that doesn't matter. They're not, the scales aren't glued down, they're just they're just tightened down with these Allen heads. So literally getting a couple Allen heads, you could just tighten them right back up. And the reason they do that is so you can take on and off the scales, change them, do whatever you want to do. Um, so you're not stuck with one scale. Like uh, a lot of knives and a lot of the knives I do, I like to um, JB weld on the scales. That means you're stuck with those scales. Um, but with this, you know, you have options to change the scales, do whatever. The problem is if you're out in the field, and these loosen and end up coming off and you don't happen to have an Allen wrench in the field, all right, well, you might you might be screwed there, but it's a full tang, so you're still gonna have a tang. So no matter what, even if the scales fell off, you still have a knife. Still have a knife. Speaking of knife, let's knife with it. Let's try a uh, push cut and a half inch nylon rope. All right, so it took a little work, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is a very used edge, even though it's shaved sharp, it could be duller here than here. You know what I mean? I shaved here, not here. But um, it still cut through and it, and it still did its job. Let's see. Speaking of do its job. Ugh. They are not made to cut hoses. We're going to cut a hose. Or at least we're going to try. Let's get you up so I know you're in the shot. Let's see here. That jimping, if I was going to be 100% honest, is pretty aggressive when you're um when you're really digging into it that is wow i could feel the scale shift right there um but uh the the jimping is is nice and it's aggressive but it would feel a lot better with a gloved hand that is some aggressive aggressive jimping right there so i can absolutely if i'm using the jimping for what it's made for to to push and i'm doing that double thumb and i'm guiding the knife with my thumbs that right there is some serious, serious jimping. And not necessarily, I mean, in a great way if I'm wearing gloves, in a great way if it's like icy, things like that, if you're, in, if you're doing some winter bushcraft, winter camping. Um, but for an ungloved hand and, you know, semi-dry areas, um, that jimping might be a little bit rough, a little bit rough. So it's cutting the hose, it's taking a little bit of work, um, but it's getting there. Let's see. There we go. We got that jimped edge. Um, that's still good, but let's let's test it for for what it is. Let's get over and 
we're in the camp and we're needing firewood or we're needing a uh, needing to clear some brush or we're needing to build uh, some kind of shelter that's where this thing is going to come through you need to dispatch an animal or or uh, break it down anything like that that's where this knife is going to shine let's see let's see let's see <laughs> told you so let's see so there's there's some things I love and there's some things I don't love about the knife um, I, I think the things I love the shape the the extreme usability of this shape things I don't love jimping and I love jimping it's not that I don't love the jimping it's just it's it's it can be a little rough um, but still really really freaking nice it's a solid blade oh, that's the problem gotta be honest I don't want to say anything bad about a knife I hate saying something bad about a knife but if there's a flaw to pick out I got to pick it out and even if the smallest I mean if the uh, if it's a small and stupid flaw I mean who cares oh the jimping's a little rough wear gloves if you have a great knife then you can wear gloves and you're gonna get all the use out of that knife that you're gonna get without any issues right let's see Wow, that bit in really well. Really, really well. There we go. There we go. That's not so bad. Let's see here. Let's see here. See all that tiny little stuff? Now on a dry piece, that's going to be really helpful as far as bark scraping to help with fluff and things like that. You can use a spine and it's going to be a lot better. But if you don't have a 90 degree spine, which luckily this one does, um, something like that, just an exposed area is going to do the same kind of thing. But uh, what I, I mean, what could you use this for? I think for me, especially being in New England right now, Something like this would be great for like crab shells, mussel shells, things like that. If you need to fish, you get some mussels off the off any rocks, you smash them open. Now you have bait, or you can just boil up them them mussels. You'll be all right, um, or steam them up. So that for me is what that would be for. Other than that, I would have no use for it. Um, and it depends on where you're living. If you're living in a place where you don't need something like that, then you don't need something like that but uh, it does have a it does have a use it does have a purpose let's see Ugh. for a five and a half inch blade um it actually it, it it holds on really well and gives you um some really good leverage in the chop uh that was pretty nice it feels like oh yeah we're getting see them skies over there that's some dark skies. We're getting ready for sun. We're getting ready for sun. The wind just picked up out of nowhere. So we are getting ready for something. Let's come over to some of these dry things. So in this tree here. Um, and uh, see how that goes. But I mean, overall, overall, this is a really nice knife. Um, I think it, it's built extremely well. That's one thing I can definitely say. Even if there's design things that somebody might not like. Um, it, I mean, it's built so good. It wouldn't matter. And for me, this shape, this design shape, I freaking love. So I'm not one of those. that's not going to like that, but there are people out there who don't. Let's see. We're using the spine whack. Oh, oh, you can see the, the denting it's put in there. This thing is on that tree real well. Ugh. So you could, obviously it's not going to cause any damage to this knife. It's denting the hell out of that. That was nice and dry. That was a nice dry piece. That was hard. It was hard. Right, let's see over here. We got this one that should go. Yeah, that's really good. So now I got this poison ivy or whatever it is, vine that's growing. Let's see here. So, I mean, right there, you just 
just like that, you kill the, uh, the vine from spreading. Don't touch these with your bare hands. I'm not allergic, but if you see something like that growing up a tree that looks like this, don't touch it with your bare hands. You might not be allergic and you might get screwed. I mean, you might be allergic and you might be screwed. All right, so now I wanna do the same kind of thing, but with the edge on this harder, dry stuff. <laughs> Bit right in. Let's see here. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. So, how much damage is the edge taken from hitting dry, hard branches like that? It's not. It's not taking any damage at all. Um, so far. Oh, yeah. There we go. So far, so good. The edge still looks fantastic. All right. Let's bring it over. Ooh. You know where we're going to go. Hold on a second. I can't just walk past the target. Hmm. All right, let's do it. Oh, I could hear the, uh, you could hear the, uh, the scales rattle. Let's try. Ooh, ho, ho. I threw that so much hard, man. I threw that one really hard. Uh, this kind of knife, this kind of style, I know I can easily throw. I don't know even how I missed the first one. But um, I, this is good, man. I'm telling you, if, if there was like a, a, a small critter and I was starving and I knew if I took a step, it would walk away. A little bit of practice with a knife like this. Bam. <laughs> that was first shot right there. That was 10 feet away from a soccer ball. And... I just hit the tip, just hit the tip from 10 feet away on a single throw. What that does is it gets me fed. It gets me fed. So let's take this right here. Make sure you guys are actually in the shot. That would be mighty nice of me. Let's see. Ooh, we are in a knot. Oh, I can hear the thunder now. I can hear the thunder rolling. Hear that thunder rolling, rolling round away. It's gonna rain on my ass. Cause I came out to play. Tonight God don't want me knifing. They say it's far too late. All right, here we go. Bam! Right through another knot. Square through, that is nice. That is nice. Oh. Woo! That's some pretty good edge geometry right there. The, uh, it's uh, 25s, I believe I said, it said. Um, it, it's, that's nice. That is nice. I mean, that is some all day stuff right there. So if you're feathering, um, you're gonna be really, really happy with the way this feathers. Really, really happy. Man. That is a nice little bundle right there. You can make a sweet nest. That is good. Let's see here. Man, these scales are loose. These scales are loose. This thing is sliding all over. The one on the left especially is moving up and down on me. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that, man. This is a nice knife. This is a nice damn knife. So, I mean, think about it, man. You're doing all your carving. You're, you want to whittle something, make yourself a little jungle flute. Um, or if, if you're making your tent spikes and pit spikes and arrows and spears and hot dog sticks and all that, it's the perfect kind of knife for it. It's the perfect kind of knife for it. Um, it's just one of those uh, job getter dunners. You know what I mean? And while it's still not balanced for a fighting knife, I'm seeming to have no problem getting it around. I mean, no problem. So this isn't so bad. I gotta say, Architect Knives, I mean, they know how to build a knife. Pure and simple, they know how to build a knife. It's really nice. Um, and if this was mine, I would do some of those tiger stripes on it um 
but it's not mine. It's not even scabs. So I can't play. I can't play. I can't have my fun. Otherwise, I'd send it back looking crazy. But uh, this thing is cool, man. Oh, just as I finished, I got raindrops. All right, so looks like it's going to rain. I'm all done with this one. Architect Knives, the AK 5.5. Thunder in the sky. Hi, I'm Donnie B. All Day. Until next knife.